I think one of the greatest challenges we face in a new year is looking back at what we did last year, but also making these resolutions sometimes to do something better in the new year. And resolutions can be good. I think that they're unfortunately sometimes used in the wrong way. And that can be like, you know, making yourself out to do something as opposed to have a goal for something. In other words, <coughs> I think that in the new year we should look at setting goals for ourselves, setting ideas out there that we would like to accomplish in the year, especially being in this year of 2012 and knowing that we live in the last generation. It would be so much better if we arranged our life knowing that we live in the last days and we plan for it than if we just acted like it will never happen. Because most Christians I know, whenever you talk to them about the end of the world, they're all excited about it. They all, yeah, oh boy, you know, Jesus is coming. Yeah, the rapture, oh yeah, cool. I'm, I'm thrilled about that, you know, and can't wait to, to leave, you know, and, and God's going to take us home. But then something interesting happens if you ask them, so what are you doing about it? What what plans do you have in order to get ready for Jesus' return? And then all of a sudden it gets silent. And so, well, you know, I tell people things, you know, I share with them about God. You know. But what do you do about your financial house? Are you getting your house in order? What are you doing about your possessions? Are you getting your life together? What are you doing about your spiritual house? Are you cleaning out the dust within? Are you changing some of your bad habits into good habits? This time of year is always a good time to look at what you want to accomplish and then begin to take steps to move forward in that direction. That should be a conversation that you sit down and you talk to God about. You treat Him as a real person. You have a conversation as it were. I personally believe that you should go out and buy a devotional. You should examine all those that are out there. And I think that a tradition that I want to start, you know, is to purchase every year until the Lord returns a new devotional. Not that I'll give up my old ones. <laughs> but I'd like to add some, you know, that I read and would enjoy them. I think this year I'm going to add Chuck Smith's um, Wisdom for Today. Now, unfortunately, my plan was to purchase it already. <laughs> so this New Year's resolution has already got me on. But that's because of finances. You know, I have to plan on when I can buy it and then begin to share it. But that, for me, will be an enjoyable goal, you know, to try to reach. When you plan your life, knowing that we live in these last days, you should have things that you enjoy doing, preparing for the Lord's return. Not that to make it, you know, some kind of condemnation or conviction that you have to feel, oh God, are you really telling me to get rid of my Porsche? <laughs> Do I really have to sell my Harley? Do I really have to take up my cross and follow you? Well, no, you really don't have to do any of those things. I mean, you can, you can get away with doing less. As a matter of fact, because of grace, you can either do more or you can do less. But I'll tell you one thing that you can't do, and that's ignore Jesus. You really can't, if you're born again Christian, ignore the fact that you're supposed to have a personal relationship with Him. Because, you see, God wants you to develop conversation with Him so that between you and Him, you could share His good news with other people that are around you that don't have a clue about the end of the world. Arms of Love, you are here to help save others. Never let one day pass when you have not reached out an arm of love to someone outside your home. Try sending a note, a letter, or make a visit. Help in some way. Do something. Don't just talk about it. Do it. For me, one of the things that I'd like to encourage people to do, obviously, is to participate on the internet. You have social media that is way over the top. It has become extremely active. 
In the same way that once the internet was filled with nothing but pornography, now the internet has been completely taken over by social media. For instance, like with Facebook or Twitter or you name it. <laughs> I mean, there's so many others that are out there that you can play with that are international. And you can meet people from other parts of the world that you never would have met in any other way. This is your opportunity to share Jesus. This is your chance to give your testimony. As a matter of fact, I invite you, if you want to do something and participate in a project that I have going, is that I have opened up the Biblical Christian Network to sharing personal testimonies from people that are on Facebook. Recently we had Chapel Flock just share her personal testimony of a, of a life that she had gone through and how she had walked with Jesus and how she shared about her reality of knowing Him. And then also a personal testimony from Osan Darjinian that shared of how she had come to God you know, after a long process and now is serving Him faithfully. And I know I plan on posting mine on testimony and so many other people that I've contacted that you know are using that opportunity to present their story, their testimony, their experience of what God has done in their life, whether it be raised up from childhood as a born-again Christian or whether they just suddenly one day made a commitment to God. That is what we're doing in sharing and daring to reach out to others and share the good news about how God saved them. Because, you see, there's a lot of people in the world, including my own in-laws, or whatever, my wife's children, that don't know what the gospel is. They don't really understand what a Christian is. They think that it's something weird or some religious thing that they have to give up this to do that. And you know, they have bad ideas because they live in an area that's full of Mormons, you know, so they, they understand the Mormon part, they don't understand the Christian part. And then what few Christians there are, I have no idea if they understand that. So, when you share your testimony, and there are so many testimonies that should be shared, then the wide variety of Christian experience of how God has moved in a person's life begins to be made known to other people that have no idea what a Christian is. Then they can step across the bridge of your testimony to come to Jesus. So you see, there's always an opportunity for you to do something. And then, likewise, as it says in here, a note or a letter or a visit, when you're on a social media, you can pass on the good news that you've heard or seen. When you see something that's very positive and you know that Jesus is in it, share it. Just pass it on to somebody. They'll pass it on and pass it on. We used to pass out tracts that way. We used to go down to the beach, down to the pier and give out tracts. Everybody knew that Jesus Greeks there walking around with guitars and passing out tracts. You can still do the same. As a matter of fact, this year we're bringing back Schick Publications to the Facebook pages and just distributing them again. You could pass them around. Do something, but share Jesus every day in some way. And you know what? I dare to say that Jesus will come in some way and share with you his heart. Be full of joy. Joy saves, joy cures, joy in me. In every ray of sunlight and in every smile, every act of kindness or love and every trifling service, enjoy. Be mindful that if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. <laughs> Each day do something to lift another soul out of the sea of sin or disease or doubt into which man has fallen. Literally, humanity is drowning in its own sorrows. I still walk today by the lakeside and call my disciples to follow me and become fishers of men, to rescue those souls out of the sea of despair. The helping hand is needed that raises the helpless to courage, to struggle, to faith, to help. Love them, laugh with them, cry with them, die with them. But love and laughter are the beckoners to faith and courage. Trust on, love on, and have joy in everything you do. Refuse to be downcast, for not all time periods are to be cast down, although there is a period of time where you may be. But rather, choose to step up and step forward to share that downcast time with someone else so you may encourage them. Love and laugh and I am with you. I bear your burdens, so cast your burdens upon me and I will sustain you. And then in the very lightheartedness, you turn and help another with the burden that is pressing too heavily upon them or her. Because even as you received grace, 
likewise you share that grace you've been given. As you receive forgiveness, you likewise share that forgiveness you've been given. You pass it on. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around are warmed up by its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. How many burdens can you lighten this year? How many hearts can you cheer? How many souls can you help? And in giving you gain, good measure pressed down and running over, because the Lord your God has given you His Spirit. The Lord your God has given you his love. The Lord your God has given you His mercy and His kindness. But the Lord your God has also given you His commission. So don't be one of those accused of having some omission in their life, but that your mission now has become to share Jesus this year in a more personal way than you ever dreamed imaginable. In a joy-filled life that you just share what you're doing and you dare to tell others about Jesus. As I get stuck on the chair. 